right, so picking up where we left off yesterday, the last thing we wrote was the two string. And again, if you play this, we get the lists outputted. It does bug me, though, that there's an ending comma here. So I'm going to fix that really quick by just changing the way the while loop works to go to current.next does not equal null. This will now loop it to the sec, not the last spot, but the second last spot. So now you can see it goes seven dog, but it doesn't include the last spot on there. To include the last spot, I'm going to go down here where I return it. And right before here, I'm going to say current dot to string right here to finally put current on at the very end after the loop has been completed. And now you can see it goes seven dog juniper and there's no comma at the end. So that's just a personal thing, okay? Um, also on a personal note, when I call an output right here, list one to string, I don't actually have to say to string. I can just say list one and it will automatically call to string when it outputs it. And I can do that with both of these lists. Just to shorten up our code a little bit, it's just not necessary to do that. We did that in our test. All right, so now some new content for today. So what we're going to do today is working up towards some of the methods we're going to be building, we're going to make a little private method inside of our linked list. Okay? So right now, if I look at it, all our methods are public. Public constructor, public is empty, size, etc. All our methods are public. So I'm going to add a private method. Normally, I like to put private methods, methods together, sometimes at the end. So I'm going to make a little private method. Now remember, private means it only exists within the class. So private boolean in range int index. Eventually, we're going to make methods that'll act like arrays. And we'll say, hey, give me spot five of the linked list, just like we would with an array. And you guys know one of the most common mistakes you make with arrays is you accidentally try and go past the edge of the array. So one thing we can do with this linked list is we can automatically check it. So we'll have built-in error checking to make sure that we don't shoot out of range here. All right, so this should be pretty simple. First of all, if this is an empty list, it doesn't matter what number you give me, it's not in range. So I'm going to return false. If it's an empty list, even if you give me a zero, that's not in range. There is no spot that'll work if it's an empty list, okay? Because there is no existing spots at all. So that will automatically be out of range. Now, what other index number will you know is never going to work? Think about it for a second. Let's assume we have a list, so we assume there's something in the list. What number will you know for sure won't work, just like with an array? Negative one. Negative one. Exactly. How about negative anything? So why don't we code that in? Else if the index is less than zero, that's any negative number at all, let's return false. All right. Now, what other numbers would be invalid? What do you think? What do you think, Liam, who's not paying attention? So what other numbers would be invalid for an index number? We did, we did negative. Okay, but we don't have dot length because this isn't an array. But you're in the right point. It's else if the index is greater than or equal to the length. Length is a global variable in this class. Okay, so why can't it be equal to the length? Because just like arrays, we start at zero, right? So we can't ever have, if it's a, it's a list of size five, it'll be spot zero to four that'll be valid. There'll no be valid spot five. And then finally, at this point, we can return true. So this is our little in range method. It just checks that index number to make sure it's valid. And we're going to keep this a private method within the class just to help with our error checking. If it's empty, we're done. If it's less than zero, we're done. If it's greater than or equal to the length, we're done. Otherwise, this number's fine. It's in range. Somewhere within the list, this number exists. So this is an internal method or sometimes called a private or, or a helper method. All right, review from last unit. What's in between public and private? Protected. Protected. That's going to be our next method. 
we're going to make a protected uh, method that returns a node called get first node. Okay. Now this is a pretty simple one. It's one line. To get the first node, all I do is return the head of the list. And while you're writing this, go ahead and write another one. Get last node, and it returns the tail. Now this is again based on our encapsulation, very much like we did with the size method. These two methods allow you to access head and tail without being able to change head and tail. So we just get them, okay? Now the reason I'm making them protected is sort of a, a deeper meaning there for it. For now, we don't need to worry about why I'm doing it that way. Just that we don't want that to be too accessible outside the class. Only just for my children allow to use these methods. So I can get the first node, I can get the last node. Now the next method we write is going to be a little more complicated. Now we're going to be able to get a node at a certain spot. Okay, so we ready? This will also be protected. So a protected method that returns a node, just called get node at this index. Okay, so give me the node at this spot. Okay, so here's the way I assume this method's going to work. Let's assume we have a linked list with a cat, a dog, and a rat in the list. Okay? And it's a doubly linked list. It links both forward and back. This link is a null. This link is a null. This is the head of the list. This is my reference to the head. This is my reference to the tail of the list. We assume that list is in existence. Outside the class, we say get node 2. And it's going to give us back a reference to a node. So unlike arrays, there are no index numbers here. But we can assume that this is spot 2. Just like we assume that's 1 and that's 0. So really, when we get spot 2, it's going to give us this node right here. Okay? But what if I give it get node 5? Okay? Theoretically, that should not happen, and we'll use our in-range method to check that. But it's still going to have to give us back a node of some kind. So if it's not in range, what should we send them back? No, but minus one's not a node. Null, right. Null will be a valid thing to return. So let's start with those little error scenarios. Let's say if in range equals false, if it's not in range, return null. There. So that's a built-in error check. If the number they give me an in index is not a valid number, we'll just say, here's a null. That didn't work. I can't give you that node because it doesn't exist. Now, if this was an array, we would be crashing at this point because we'd be already out of range. But we are building in an error check. Now, there's a couple other ones that are easy to do. So I'm going to say else if index equals spot 0. Oh, well, if it's spot 0, I just return get first node because we just took care of that. If it's spot zero, then I'll just give you the first node. And similarly, else if index equals length minus one, return get last node. There. Those are easy. Okay? Those are really easy for me to do because they just make sense, I hope. Okay? So if I'm not in range, let me get out of here. There's nothing for me to give you, so I'm going to give you a null. Oh, if you're asking for spot zero, and keep in mind it's already passed the first test. So we know there has to be a spot zero because in range already checked it. So if there's a spot zero, I'll just give you the first node. If you want to give me length minus one, oh, okay. 
I've already checked to make sure there is a, that spot. I'll just give you the last node. That's easy. The next part is anything in between first and last. So that's an else statement. And this is going to take a little more code to write than just one line. So for that, I'm going to put some curly brackets on here. Okay. Here's how we're going to, we have to essentially travel through the linked list until we get to that spot. So similarly, as the toString method, we're going to have to loop to the spot. Because unlike arrays, we can't immediately go to a certain spot. We have to kind of fake it. So what were we going to say, Liam? We have to traverse. So we're going to say node current equals head. And we don't have to start at the head. We could also start at the tail. It doesn't really matter. We're going one direction or the other. Okay? We have to go one direction. And that's what makes it beautiful. Yeah. Now a for loop. Okay? Here we can actually use a for loop because we're going to start at zero and we're going to go up to the index number. So what we do is instead of going up to 10, we go up to index right there. Okay, so this and this are the same thing. Okay, the index number is the number I had right here. Okay, and it'll just loop right up to that spot. And all I do is keep moving current along. Current equals current dot next. That shifts current to the next spot and the next spot and the next spot. And then finally, I return current at the end. Okay, so I'm going to diagram that for you right here just to show you what I mean by this. So again, as you guys key that in, I'm going to draw a linked list. I wish I could have kept it up there. I'll be drawing these in my dreams one day. Links back, links back. Null, okay. This is the head. This is the tail. Okay. Here we go. So if I say, give me node 0, first thing it checks to make sure 0 is in range. And 0 is definitely in range. So then it says, oh, the index is 0. Get the first node, which just returns head. So done. If I said, give me node 2, Again, same thing. It would say, oh, 2 is the length, which is 3 minus 1. So get the last node, which would just automatically get the tail. But let's say I said, give me node 1. Okay, This is what's going into the index, a 1. So it skips through the first three if and else if statements and gets down to here. So now what it does is it makes something called current as a reference that is the same reference as the head. That's what this line says, current equals head. So here's current right here, pointing at the head of the list. Then it starts a for loop, and it's going to have a variable i looping up to this thing, whatever index is. So right now, 0 and 1 don't match. So it's going to go in, and it's going to say current equals current.next, which moves current over to here. That's what current did. Then i is going to go up to 1. Now it's going to stop the loop because i is not less, 1 is not less than 1. So it stops at that point. It says done. And at the end of this, it returns current, which is spot 1, which is what we wanted. And again, I just did a three node list. If, if I was like 30 along, it would have kept shifting it up until index reached that number we were looking for. This method get node is again a simple traversal of the linked list. But it's going to be very important helper method to get to spots within the list that we need. The get node method is very important. All right, we have time for one more, I think. One more quick one. Let's do the clone method. It's on our to-do list anyways. How do we clone a linked list? OK? We had it sitting there waiting. And at this point, we did a shallow clone. We did only return to reference. So let's make a deeper clone. Let's start by creating a new linked list. So linked list, data type T, called list, equals a new linked list. OK. So we'll start by building a brand new linked list, and then that's what we're going to return. We're going to return that brand new linked list. So it takes up new memory. But it's not a clone yet. This is currently an empty list until I fill it up. 
So I have a brand new list, but I haven't filled it yet. So what I'm going to do now is loop through my old list and copy it over to my new list. And I can use a for loop for that. For less than length. Okay. So now I'm going to start at spot zero and go to the length. If, by the way, the length is zero, then the for loop will never run, and it'll just return an empty list, which would make sense if we're cloning an empty list. Okay, here's what I now do. I say list dot add to the back some data. So I'm going to add data to the back of the list. Well, what's that data going to be? Well, let's back up a step here. The data is of type T comes from this link list dot get the node at spot i dot read its data like that okay now we're gonna have to back up there for a second to to sort of see what we're doing there but this is the use of our get node method get node is going to spot i taking the data out of spot i and trying to store it temporarily in this thing called data. The problem is, when you're using generics like this, we have to do one more step. We have to do what's called a cast. We still have to cast this into data type T, right there. OK, right before the bell rings, I know we're a little short of time right here, so we'll, finish, we'll pick up on this tomorrow. But I'm going to test this right now by doing this. Back to the collections test. I'm going to make a linked list of type string called the copy equals list1 dot clone it. So my linked list called copy is a clone of list1, which was a linked list of strings. And then I'm going to s out or output the copy. And let's see if it did in fact make a clone. So here I'm trying to clone my first list into this one, and let's see if it actually cloned it. And look at that. Cloned it perfectly. Perfect clone. Okay? And this clone has new memory in it. So for example, if in between here I added something to the copy, like add to the front. Can I have a random word, please? Cat. What? Kitten? I'm going to add kitten to the front of the copy it will be different now than list one, even though it was originally a clone. And there it is. Kitten's at the front of that list, whereas it's not in front of the other one. Okay? So remember, the clone method is a very useful method at different times. All right, kids, I will see you.